Oh, okay. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Kim. I am the president and director of Animal Assisted Therapy Services, Massachusetts. There is one in Connecticut as well. Uh, this here is Tomo. Tomo is a two-year-old American Akita, and his job is to be a therapy dog. Sit. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So first, I'm going to start with discussing different types of working dogs. And then uh, I'll show you, talk about a little bit of the training that goes into creating a therapy dog like Tomo. And then lastly, I'm going to show you some really great pictures of our dogs at work. Tomo down. Good boy. Right. Like I said, he might wander around, and if he does, just give him a pat. He's just looking for some reassurance. Checking in on everyone. All right, so the first uh, group of dogs I have is going to be the emotional support dog and the service dog. I group these dogs together because their job is to help uh, their handler, not others. So most of us know what a service dog is. They're going to be helping someone that has a disability. They can go anywhere that a wheelchair would go or a walker would go or an EpiPen would go because the dog is there to support that person medically. Emotional support dog can technically be any animal. There is no training requirement, but they do have some federal rights. They can uh, live in equal housing opportunities. So if it's a non-dog apartment, if you have your doctor's note, you would be able to bring your ESA or ESD for dog. And they can also travel. So they can go on airplanes, trains, subways, things like that. My next slide talks a little bit more about emotional support dogs because a lot of people have questions about this. If you get your certificate on the internet from a doctor in California, that is a total scam. What you need is you're going to get a doctor's note from your doctor or your psychiatrist, someone that you're actively seeing, and they will need to write down all those following things that verify that that dog um, is working to help you with a mental health related condition. So that's my dog, uh, Kiva. She has passed away earlier this year, and there she is. She's helping me at work. I had HR approval with my doctor's note to bring the dog to work with me, and that was after I had gone through a trauma. So then I got better, and the dog went back to its job of being a therapy dog. But during that time, as my emotional support dog, she worked for me only, right? Those dogs helped their handler, not others. These dogs are gonna be helping others and not their handler. So we have the therapy dog. You can see a picture of Tomo. He is at the Special Olympics and also crisis response canines. So a therapy dog is gonna be trained or certified to help someone in a low stress environment by appointment. For example, the library contacted me to give this presentation to you today. I'm not just going to walk in and say, hi, I have a dog, does anybody wanna read with us? Mm -hmm. We make sure that we have permission and that we have an appointment and it is scheduled and planned. Same thing for crisis response. Just because there could be a crisis going on, oh, I have a therapy dog, hi, I'm here to help. No way. You definitely need to make sure that you have permission to be where you are called to be. Um, these dogs are a little bit different than therapy dogs because they're dealing with a lot of heightened sensory stimuli, such as, you know, dogs have much better smell than us. They have much better hearing than us. So you have to be aware of the dog's surroundings and take that into consideration as you go through your training. Not every therapy dog can be a crisis response dog. And then again, I do have my other dog, Kiva, right after I had my emotional support dog, and then she went back to her job as a therapy dog. That is us at the US Capitol. We were there for a line of duty death of a police officer. So we stayed in DC for the whole week before, during, and after the funeral to check in with the US Capitol Police and make sure everybody was feeling okay. Lastly, I discuss police comfort dogs because our organization trains them too. So you have some pictures there. You've got um, the St. Bernard, the big, big, big dog. He is the very first police comfort dog in the entire country. And he comes from Greenfield, Massachusetts. His name's Clarence and he's a good friend of mine. And um, let's see, what else do we have for our photos? We have Moose is sitting in the chair. He, mm -hmm. as you can see, he's wearing our vest. He works in Medway Dispatch. I'll talk about him in a moment. We have canine Finn, who's in the picture next to Moose, and then canine Gracie, who's getting her pup cup at Holy Cross. <laughs> she works with the police department there. So these dogs are gonna be really helpful for the uh, police department to establish community rapport and community relations, but they're also going to be helping people that might be in a crisis as well. So they do both therapy work and crisis response work. 
All right, here we are. I want to talk a little bit about our training classes and what goes into making a therapy dog. Um, if you have a young dog, you're going to be starting with the puppy class and then potentially with an adult dog or puppy, intermediate obedience, and then the canine good citizen is a prerequisite for our program. So if you have an older dog, that's totally fine. You can absolutely join our team. You do not have to have a baby puppy, but start off with the canine good citizen. And you can find any avail evaluator that's local to you on the AKC website. Found one too. All right, this is our training program. This is what our dogs have to go through. Uh, there's a handler lecture, which is four hours, where I'm going to be discussing client populations, different facilities that we visit, canine behavior and signs of stress. Then we're going to move forward to our therapy dog classes. This is six weeks and they take place in the public environments. So some of our classes are gonna be at a park and maybe downtown Worcester where it's very busy and chaotic with the ambulances driving by. We also do classes in some stores, so Tractor Supply or Home Depot, stores that are pet friendly. Like I said, we're not just gonna walk into a place and say, oh, I have a dog, I have a right to be here. So we make sure that we go to pet friendly stores when we conduct our training services. And uh, let's see, what else? Uh, some other classes that we have, we actually go to breweries. That's a great location too, because there's always um, children, dogs, lots of people, food, and food trucks. So we think breweries are a great place to, tra place to train also. The things that we're going to be working on are included within the CGCA and CGCU. That stands for Canine Good Citizen Advanced and Canine Good Citizen Urban. There's also the public access test. That is the obedience requirement for all service dogs. So even though it's a seeing eye dog or a seizure alert dog, they have to have good base obedience to be able to conduct their jobs. So that's another part that we consider within our test. We also consider some therapy specific items such as petting from children, hugging, or escalated behavior because they, they might encounter those situations when they're at work. We have a mentorship program. So as you progress throughout the therapy dog training classes, you can team up with a current therapy dog team and go on a real visit with them with a real public client. And we renew every two years, which I also think is very important. Some organizations do not. And I think it's important to make sure that we're still up to scale and we're still working effectively with our dog as a team. All right, here we go. This is some great photos of our dogs in action. We have currently about 50 therapy dog teams and we do have two cats. Look at how cute they are. And we serve all of Massachusetts and we've also got some social media. So let's jump right into those photos. All right, school visits. We are involved in a lot of schools. Our dog's specialty is working with the special education programs, with the guidance departments, and also with general population doing reading programs. So that's one of the reasons why we're here today at the library. We are at many, many schools without uh, the Commonwealth. We're so proud of the work that these dogs do to help students. We also go to colleges. So especially during midterms and finals when the students are encountering a ton of stress, it's really helpful for the students to relax with a therapy dog and take a little brain break as they're writing those essays and prepping for those exams. So we'll go as far west as Mount Holyoke College, we go as far east as Harvard University, and we have a lot of schools within central Massachusetts that we visit. We do a lot of medical facility visits too, such as nursing home, rehab centers, and that could be physical rehab or addiction rehab, hospice, hospitals, and then we've got Walter there, that cute little puppy picture, that's gonna be right in the front lobby of the Boston Center for Memory. He is their dog and he lives at that facility, making sure all the patients are calm as they get their blood work taken. Again, another plug for our police comfort dogs and crisis response canines. These are all the dogs that we have right now. We've got canine Finn who's sitting in that basket. He is a present. <laughs> he's, such a, he's such a gift. What a good boy. Canine Gracie is there. It's winter, so they're bundled up. And we've got Tomo. He's sitting at the desk at the Worcester Police Department doing some work in 911. Lastly, I have our upcoming events. So we're gonna be at the Woosox. We've actually been, we're going to be featured five times. One event has already occurred where we are being honored as Worcester's Wonder Dogs. And then on Sunday, July 30th, the whole entire organization will be honored. 
And of course, you can also find us at Pet Rock, and I plan to do some canine good citizen testing as well.